Good afternoon. Welcome to my laboratory, and uh, happy birthday to the United States of America. Uh, this is the 4th of July, uh, 2012. And what you're looking at there is another one of the most complicated circuits that you're ever going to see, because it incorporates a capacitor. Uh, we have a positive rail and a negative rail and that is a little automotive light bulb. It's a 12 volt light bulb that uh, is generally used for things like uh, the dome light or instrument lights or things like that. And that is a capacitor. That's a 10,000 picofarad uh, polyethylene rolled capacitor. Okay, and I have a bunch of those um, just, just like that. 5% is the tolerance in the capacitance, and 500 volts is the maximum voltage that it can handle safely without puncturing. Okay, and here I've got one, and I've uh, sectioned it on the bandsaw, and I was hoping to show you how uh, it's actually made. didn't come out too well, but you, you can sort of see what's going on there. It's basically a roll. It's a, a strip of polyethylene plastic, clear plastic, just like saran wrap that's been metalized on both sides with uh, aluminum, I think, since that was the way it cut. And then the thing is, uh, it's got an, uh, a, a wire lead to each side uh, of the plastic, to each surface of the aluminum, and then the thing is rolled up into a very, very tight little roll, and then encapsulated in more plastic. Okay, so that's what a capacitor, That's there are many different ways to make a capacitor, but the basic idea is to take two conducting plates, get them as close together as you can, but separated by a dielectric or insulating material. And what the capacitor does is it stores energy in the electric field tension between the two charged plates that are so close together yet separated by a dielectric. It's another way of storing energy except not in a magnetic field like an inductor does, but rather in an electric field. Okay, so that's, that's, that's one of the capacitors. Now, one of the features of a capacitor is that it will not pass DC as long as you're below its rated level. A capacitor simply won't pass DC, but because of the way that it stores energy in an electric field, it winds up being able to pass AC depending on the frequency of the AC. So for every given capacitance, there's a frequency at which the capacitor will pass the AC power almost without, without interference. It's almost like it's not even there. And that's kind of what I want to illustrate with this little demonstration here. So here we've got a 12 volt battery, and here we've got the circuit. And I've already got the negative lead of the battery hooked up, so now I'm just going to hook up the positive lead of the battery to the positive bus. Don't need to discuss much, just take the bus. And I think you can see now that that little automotive bulb is glowing brightly. I put the little foil strip there to keep the board from heating up because that's it's actually quite a bright little bulb. All right. Can you see that? Swivel the overhead light out of the way there. I think you can see that that bulb is lighting brilliantly uh, by the DC power directly to the bulb. <clears throat> now I'm going to move the positive lead over to the capacitor here. Right. And there's no light from the bulb. Right? Not a bit. Not a little single bit at all. Okay. So hopefully. Hopefully that proves to you, to your satisfaction, that the capacitor will not pass a DC current to the bulb. All right. So let's disconnect this now. Okay. I'm going to take it off the battery too. Right. Okay. But what about an AC current? All right. So here I have the F43 function generator. Its output goes, so this wire here, I've got it routed under the workbench and then up to the oscilloscope. And then from out the oscilloscope, I have it going to the standard uh, function generator 
clip lead pair output here. So this is the output from the F43 function generator. And right now I have it set to produce a 60 hertz sine wave. Uh, just as an aside, whenever I show a single trace on this oscilloscope, I will always be using, unless I say otherwise explicitly, I will always be using that center radical marker right there for the zero baseline with a single trace. It's only when I put dual traces on that I separate the baselines and put one up here and one up there. So whenever you see a single trace on my oscilloscope, you can assume, unless I've told you otherwise, that the center radical marker is the zero baseline. Okay? So we're looking at this function generator output right now at about 12 volts peak, or rather 12 volts positive and 12 volts negative. We're at uh, 10 volts per division, no attenuation. And this is the mighty F43, so if I crank the F43 up, I can actually go 5, 10, 15, 12, rather, excuse me, 10, 20, 30, 40. I can actually get 40 volts peak to peak, and I have a considerable amount of offset before I run into the function generator's offset floor, right? So from up there, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, right? I have a range of 60 volts with this F43 function generator, but I'm only interested right now in a plus or minus 12 volt swing, okay? About. So that's a sine wave at 60 hertz, 0.6 times 100 sine wave, and the attenuator is set wherever it is set. Okay? So let's see if that will turn on the light. All right, where are my leads here? Okay, so just like before, we'll go ahead and clip the negative to there, and uh, we'll clip the positive to the rail there. All right, so AC, we're not, not going through the capacitor now, we're just going directly through the rail there. So AC, now that's, since that's a drain on the function generator, you can see how the voltage has dropped, right? So let's turn the voltage back up on the function generator to where we get, uh, to where we get that solid, nice solid 12 volts AC in there, right? This is AC, right? Because it's going positive and negative with respect to the baseline. So with that amount of current in there, without the capacitor, we can see that the bulb is indeed glowing, not as brightly as it was with the straight DC, because our RMS value here is not going to be 12 volts, right? So the power at the bulb is less, even though our peak-to-peak -peak voltages, or rather the peak voltage excursion is about the same. Okay, so now let's go, let's put that same 60 hertz through the capacitor and see what happens. Just like before. Nothing. Nothing. So 60 hertz line current is just like DC as far as that capacitor is concerned. Ain't nothing. Nothing going on through the bulb. But we're not really concerned with a 60 hertz signal, are we? We're more worried about some higher frequency, right? So, let's see if we can get to a higher frequency here. Let's shift the function generator to 1 megahertz and look. It's already glowing, and it's glowing brighter than it was when we had it hooked up just at this, just to straight without the capacitor. And that's just that. That's not even at one megahertz yet. So let's go ahead and crank the function generator over to about where we know the Ainsley circuit operates, which is somewhere around 1.5 megahertz. And uh, So there we're putting the sine wave out. Let's see, so that's at one, one microsecond per division. 
and we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. A little bit over eleven peaks in eight microseconds. So <laughs> you do the math. <laughs> We're at right at the frequency that uh, Ainsley's circuit oscillates at. And you can see right there that that bulb is glowing just as brightly as it ought to be with that much voltage going through it, right? Just like it was when we had the thing hooked up without the capacitor and at a lower frequency passing through across there, okay? So, uh, actually I'm kind of thinking right now that the oscillations uh, default, as Ainsley would like to say, to the frequency that matches the the tuned the, the, the tuned tank circuit formed by the by the gate capacitances or rather the the C, uh, CSS capacitances of the MOSFETs and the inductances of the wires uh, and that's what determines the frequency of the oscillation it's the frequency at which the capacitor formed by the Ainsley circuit best passes best passes AC all right so, so think about what's going on here. You're, not only are you looking at a function generator acting as a power supply source, you're also looking at a capacitor passing all of that power to a light bulb as if the capacitor really wasn't even there. If I move this over to the other side, and, the, and now we're not feeding it with a capacitor, look, the bulb is almost exactly the same brightness, right? Right? Okay, capacitors. They're very mysterious, aren't they? Thank you for watching.